Tap three mana, ice cream with banana. Now our problem solved. Oh, tickles, tickles, tickles. Yes. Oh, that is that is a hit. Now we definitely can win. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Sway with everything. Tickles off the top to steal the win. Okay, the jargon's immense. I'm going to say a couple of these, the jargon. Um, if you're an expert magic player, you'll know most of these. DT, Wheel, Ancestral, Lotus, Twister, Ritual, Necro, Plow, Force, Library, Shop, Strip, Bolt, Him, Wrath, Geddon, Factory, Drain. There's Shop, there's Ping. Goodness gracious, these you can shorten tons of words. Um, this is just uh, how magic players talk. And if you're a magic player, it can be a little daunting. The only way to fix it is to grow your bag of tricks. So here is top 10 uh, slang words for creatures in Magic the Gathering. There's more than these that exist. I just cut it down to 10 so you can remember 10. And, uh, you know, they say the, the best way to, to increase your vocabulary is you just learn a new word every day or a couple of words every day. And eventually you can talk like an English professor. So here we go. Number 10. Tim. Why do you call Particle Sorcerer Tim? Well, it's from Monty Python and the Holy Grail skit. They called me Tim. Tim was a guy with a cool beard, just like Prodigal Sorcerer, and it came out about the same time as Prodigal Sorcerer. And Tim's a wizard in the Monty Python skip in the 90s, and Prodigal Sorcerer is a person from the 90s, so Prodigal Sorcerer is Tim. They also had Pirate Ship, which is a 4-3 island home that does tap to one damage to a target. They call it Tim on a Boat. There's also a wand that you could tap to do one damage to every, any target. That's called pinging, if you like slang. That's Tim on a stick. Sure. Number nine. Kravorkian Vampire. Why is Kravorkian Vampire called Kravorkian Vampire? Well, Dr. Kravorkian was a person in the 90s here in Michigan, same state as I live. Actually, the same city as I lived for a time when he was in jail. I actually played against Dr. Kravorkian's jailer. And uh, that was the one and only time I played Krovik and Vampire. The card's just not that great. At the beginning of each end step, if a creature dealt damage by Krovik and Vampire this turn died, put this card into the battlefield under your control. Sacrifice it when you lose control of Krovik and Vampire. So it's a 3-3. It doesn't even have flying, to tell the truth. Played it once. Got to chat about Dr. Kravorkian with, with his jailer. Had a good time. Um, it's not that good. That's why it's back in number 9. Number eight, Ernie. Isn't that cute? Ernum, and Ernum Genie. It's not Dejen. I said Dejen when I was like nine. It took me a long time to, to learn that D J I N N was Genie. Seems like a real we weird way of saying saying Genie. But uh, this was part of Ernageddon. Uh Basically, you would turn four, play Ernum Dejen Genie. Uh, and then it, it would give your opponents forced walk, and there'd be no force in play to take advantage of Ernim Genie's ability. And you would just, uh, for your opponent, just put him on a, a nice clock, and your opponent would be dead. He wouldn't have any lands, he wouldn't draw lands, and the game just would be over. It's very uninteract uninteractive. It was a powerful white and green deck back in the early 90s. Uh, number 7. Blinky. Blinky won me a tournament. Uh, I built a deck with four Blinking Spirits and four Opal Acroliths, which does about the same thing as Blinking Spirit. It's basically creatures that just don't die. And then you can put in a bunch of, uh, I put in four Divine Interventions. So White White 2 gives a creature plus three plus three permanently, enchant creature. Now it's called an Aura. But uh, yeah, you, you put Divine Intervention on top of Blinking Spirit, it's a 5-5. Five, five. Puts your opponent on a fast clock. And if they just try to destroy it, you just blink spirit, blinking spirit back into your hand. I had a deck, I think there was 20 creatures in the deck. The only creatures I got the whole game was just two blinking spirits. It won the game. I like blinking. Alright, number six. 
Gary. Grey Merchant of Asphodel is a mouthful. So, why not just change the words up a bit? Uh, pretend pretend uh, the, the A is where the R is, and the R is the A is, and you have a little bit of dyslexia. And just call him Gary. Uh, it's really cool because Spongebob, Snail is Gary, and uh, sang a really cool song, Where is Gary Gone? Uh, I put it in the comment of one of Dan's videos, and uh, Dan was nice enough to uh, uh, talk about the lyrics, or write about the lyrics for me. Um, it was really sad to see him rotate out of standard. Thankfully, he's still in Popper a lot with Mono Black Control. So that's why he's high up there on the list. Okay. Ready? Number five. Mox Monkey. Speaking of Popper, another Popper staple, this time in the sideboard, is Gorilla Shaman. Why is he called Mox Monkey? Well, for one colorless, X equals zero. Destroy target non-creature artifact with casting cost equal to X. Uh, the five Moxes, the Power of Nine and Black Lotus, uh, they have cast cost equal to zero. So in Vintage, you could just pay one colorless. Basically, you tap one of your own Moxes and destroys one of your opponent's Moxes. Isn't that great? And in Popper, there's Vault of Whispers, see the Synod. Uh, they're artifact lands. They all have a casting cost of zero. So you could, if you're playing against Affinity or even... Um, See Boros Kitty, or Boros Kildatha, Boros Monarch. Uh, you could you could take Squirrel Silent Shamans out of your sideboard and do some major damage to the deck. Um, in some cases, you could just get Affinity to concede because the Affinity just doesn't have enough lands. Number four, Hippie. What a terrible pixel picture. Just excuse me. What a terrible picture. Now that's a better picture. Uh, why is he called Hippie? Hypnotic Spectre was almost banned because Dark Ritual was a card that for one black, it adds three black to your mana pool, and Hypnotic Spectre costs three mana, and it's also black. So you could turn one, swamp, cast Dark Ritual, add three black to your mana pool, floating, use the three mana, and play Hypnotic Spectre, and your opponent, I don't know, maybe plays a forest, maybe plays a land or elf, go. Uh, you can make your opponent discard a card, turn two, and that card could just be a basic land, and that could just be the only land in your opponent's hand, and then he doesn't draw any land. Uh, Magic These Days doesn't really have a way of making your opponent discard a land on turn two. Uh, that's because discarding a land on turn two is, is actually backbreaking in some <laughs> cases. Um, I guess there's Goblin Lore kind of cards, isn't there? Uh, you can make each player uh, draw three and discard three. Uh, that's a way of getting them to discard all the lands in their hand. Um, but Hypnotic Spectre was the original one, I guess. Number three, Finkel. Uh, my friend had a foil Finkel. He used to pet his foil Finkel. It used to be worth a lot of money. Why is Shadow Mage Infiltrator called Finkel? Well, John Finkel. Is the greatest magic player ever lived. I think he's won over three hundred thousand uh, dollars by playing magic tournaments. And uh, if you play at Worlds, it used to used to be uh, if you play at Worlds, uh, there's twenty four people played Worlds last week. Uh, if you won Worlds, you got to make a card, and the picture is yourself. So this picture, Shadow Mage Infiltrator, is a picture of John Finkel, and they just made drew the rest around him. Um, would have been cool wizard clothes, and now he's a wizard. Um, looks like he belongs in Demir, doesn't he? Ravnica? Yeah, what would, would be a great Demir card? This card won games. Uh, like I said, it was ridiculously expensive as a foil. Uh, now people don't even remember it. Number two, Superman. Why was Morphling called Superman? Superman could do anything. Morphling could do anything. You can untap Morphling for a blue. It gets flying. Can't be the target spells or abilities. But if you have like a Lightning Bolt or I don't know a Terror, you can tear Morphling. You can play a blue in response. In response to playing a blue response, you can tear it again, and then you can play another blue in response to that. And it would you could you could fizzle two Terrors. You can have like five Lightning Bolts in your hand, and you could just pay a mana over and over and over again and just fizzle your Lightning Bolts. It was insane. It was just unstoppable. It was invincible, just like Superman. Number one, 
Can you guess who it is? It's not a wall of ice. Bob. Why is Dark Confidant Bob? Because that's Bob May here on the front. Once again, an invitational player. Bob's probably used the most out of all these 10 cards. Um, still played in Jund. Four of. Uh, played in a couple other decks. I actually played Bob myself in uh, White Black Soul Sisters. Should should maybe run a deck tech of that sometime. But uh, everyone knows Bob. And if you don't, now you do. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the video. Please remember to like and subscribe. And if you want a notification, click the bell icon below. If you really like it, share with your friends. And if you really, really like it, give Dan Horning money on Patreon. And give me money. I love money. Do all the things. Cast mind right on yourself.